welcome to the organ printing course so in the last two weeks uh, we have discussed different bioprinting techniques the characteristics process parameters advantages disadvantages also we have done comparative analysis of different bioprinting techniques in today's lecture basically we will discuss biowings and their role in bioprinting so we we'll start with biowing what is bio biowing what are the different types of biowings possible and what are the important characteristics of biowing for 3d bioprinting or for organ printing so let's start with biowing and as i have also earlier mentioned that biowing is the most vital ingredient of bioprinting because this is the bioprintable formulation so when we make a polymer or polymer solution or hydrogel we also incorporate cells or other things in that and then if we use that for bioprinting then we can call them biowing so biowing is nothing but a bioprintable formulation so it can be cell laden hydrogel so hydrogel when the cells are embedded or encapsulate encapsulated in a hydrogel and then it is that mixture is used for bioprinting then we call them biowing so here sometimes some uh, bioactive factors or bioactive molecules are incorporated or they they may not be encap incorporated or encapsulated within the biowing so this is the most vital ingredient as you must have understood that for bioprinting we need biowings and these biowings and most of the time these biowings are very specific for a particular applications like for particular target tissue we use that tissue specific biowing so where the specific biowing that supports the growth or function of that particular cell types or cell uh, cell or the different types of cells to develop a certain tissue structure right so what it does so because by uh, if you see the bioprinting when we use this bioprintable formulation or this hydrogel cell laden hydrogel that mixture has to be loaded inside the either in, in case of inkjet or extrusion based bioprinting that cell laden hydrogel that mixture has to be loaded inside the syringe or no cartridge or nozzle right so in case of uh, laser assisted bioprinted again it is coated in the, in the in the form of ribbon right in both these cases or in all these cases the condition is is unnatural that means the cells are not used to this kind of environment we are putting them in this environment so that's why the cells when we generate biowing so we, we try to provide all the necessary conditions or is kind of a micro environment to the cells so that it is the a suitable a suitable ambience is provided to the encapsulated cells so that the cells can survive they can function the function or they can do their job like they can grow in number they can differentiate they can migrate so all these things are all these things made possible by using certain biowings that is that supports this all these functions so biowing is a as i said so biowing is a bioprintable formulation or a cell laden hydrogel it there it may contain may or may not contain bioactive molecules or bioactive factors and it provides a suitable ambience to the encapsulated cells and also it supports the cell viability and cell functionality so this is that's why biowing is very important and when we when we when we use the biowing or when we develop biowing we take utmost care to prepare the biowing in a certain way so that so that the bioprinting process is is effective so that the cells survive this bioprinting process and then it can be used for other things so we'll see what are the different properties of uh, bio bio biowing that is important for biofabrication and in this slide i have uh, taken this example of because mostly for bioprinting or biowing development we use some hydrogels because hydrogels are material hydrogels are a type of materials where they possess or they contain lot of water right so it's a water rich environment so in that actually the cells could cells can easily survive 
and they can function. So that's why mostly we use hydrogels for making different bioweight. So in this thing here, we'll discuss what are the key hydrogel properties that is required for biofabrication, right? So any bio, any um, bioprinting process, a biofabrication process, where suitability of a particular hydrogel typically depends on that particular application or biofabrication, and uh, for that particular application, what kind of physiochemical properties is required? So, and then we match the, those physical physiochemical properties with some different bio, bio hydrogels, and then we select a particular hydrogel for a biofabrication bio process. So, suitability of hydrogel for a specific biofabrication pro process mainly depends on the physiochemical properties of that particular tissue, right? So, when we sub select a tissue, we try to see their the physical properties of the tissue, like the tissue, whether the tissue is how what is the softness or hardness soil of the tissue, what are the different composition of the tissue. So, the physical chemical properties of the tissue is very important to understand while selecting for a particular bioweed or a particular hydrogel. <coughs> but one challenge of bioweed development for certain biofabrication for specific biofabrication approaches because here we have to satisfy both the requirements in terms of fabrication requirements and also in terms of cellular requirements that means for fabrication that means for fabrication we need certain type of or certain physical chemical properties of the bio ink but for cell culture the requirement is very different so that's why that is is challenge it's a challenge to suit or to to match both these things during bioprinting and uh, the hydrogel, printability of the hydrogel, that mostly depend on the physiochemical properties. The major physical properties that determine the hydrogel properties are rheological properties and cross-linking mechanism. Because now we must have understood that, or in the last few lectures also, I have stressed on this that the bioing, the most important property bioing is when they are inside the syringe or inside the before extrusion they should be they should have this flowability so that they should they should flow through the nozzle and they should come out upon extra upon application of pressure but as soon as they come out of the nozzle then they should start solidifying or so that the shape can be retained the structural the structural resolution can be maintained or the uh, printing fidelity can be improved right so that's why cross linking is another important part important part of this different biofabrication approach because rheological, rheological properties will decide how the material comes out of the nozzle like what is the flow how the material flows through the nozzle through the series through the nozzle but cross linking will help to solidify the material upon deposition or upon extrusion. So that's why these two are very important physical properties that determine the printability of the hydrogel or bioprinting capability will very much depends on these two properties. And if you see in inkjet printing, mostly you work with low viscous material, right? So the inkjet printing there, the low viscous materials is the major thing. So there, that's why they are as soon as the drop drop, suppose you are interested to bioprint certain structures with inkjet printer, then as soon as the material comes out of the nozzle, when it deposits, it too should solidify very fast. So that's the requirement for inkjet printing. Inkjet printing limited to low viscous so we, we use low viscous material. For but in extrusion based bioprinting, we use may use higher viscous material. That has some advantages. We'll see what are the advantages when you use high viscous, when you use low viscous, what are the disadvantages of this in case of bioprinting. So inkjet printing requires rapid gelation to allow fabrication of an intricate 3D structures because, because in this case, the viscosity is very less. And bioprinting with high viscous liquid materials. Yeah. So bioprinting with when we use high viscous met liquid materials for bioprinting, that what it does, it helps to retain the shape after deposition, right? 
so that's the, that's the advantage in case of extrusion by printing because in case of extrusion by printing we use high viscous material so high when high viscous material comes out of the nozzle and as soon as it comes out and that time because of this high viscosity it initially it maintains the shape shape after deposition and it allows you to do the gelatin or cross linking after fabrication so post fabrication cross linking is possible in case of extrusion by by printing because of this because we, we can use high viscous material but if the viscous material viscosity is low then as soon as it come out and it, when you deposit that it started spreading it starts spreading so that so that the shape cannot be retained basically we get a deformed structure we can get if in case of that's why in in case of low viscous material high gelatin or rapid gelatin is very important but for high viscous material gel, slow gelatin can be used can be utilized or employed because the the high viscosity that retards the shape deformation right other thing is in case of the hydrogen when you are hydrogen when you are using hydrogel for bio development for bio fabrication that time also we can we need to understand the swelling behavior or deswelling behavior of this hydrogel because this hydrogel all the hydrogel material they either they swell if we put them in uh, if they put them in buffer or media or they may deswell right? we need to understand we need to study these two properties and advance to and to, to know that with the, what is the swelling behavior or deswelling behavior of this hydrogel before bio printing the other thing is also we need to take care suppose in certain bio printing applications they are suppose we may need to use two different types of hydrogel or more than two different more than two different hydrogels so, so that time we need to understand the dissimilar swelling behavior because this each of these hydrogel they have the specific swelling behavior or deswelling behavior so that's why they, this swelling or deswelling behavior may mismatch. So that's why we need to take care of this thing when using different bindings with different swelling behavior. So these are the key hydrogel properties that we need to understand for while developing bioing for biofabrication. So we'll discuss some of these properties in details. Like these are the key hydrogel properties that are in the earlier slide also we have discussed. So here again, I have listed those properties like the rheology, viscosity, shear thinning property, yield stress. These are very, very important for hydrogel material because all this has, all these have very high influence on the printing capability or even on the cellular, by cell viability, cell functionality, all these very, these things, this hydrogel property, they influence a lot. Other this thing again as we mentioned cross-linking mechanism for hydrogel that is that is very important and in the later slides we'll discuss each of these things we'll discuss in great detail. So in, in cross-linking mechanism where actually we can cross-link the structure either by physical means like either by suppose ionic cross-linking, thermal cross-linking or stereo complex cross-linking all these things are very important for when we actually use this physical cross-linking for hydrogel because each of them have their own advantage and disadvantages. Chemical in case of chemical cross-linking, also chemical cross-linking is this process can be can be little slow, but chemical cross-linking actually help helps in uh, further stabilization of the structure so that the structure deformation and structure stability can be improved further. Similarly, proto cross-linking is another important area where uh, the high, the it is used for different by printing applications like to stabilize the structure to retain the to for shape retention for structural fidelity for structure visualization for structure stability all these things different cross linking mechanisms are used we'll discuss this in the later slide so let us first before even actually discussing what are the what are the different uh, hydrogel properties in great detail let us understand what are the ideal material properties that is required for bio printing what are the different and this, as I earlier mentioned the selection of appropriate materials for use in bioprinting and their performance in a particular application 
depends on several features depends on several features like how you how you select a material for by printing and their performance of that material for particular application that can be that can be that can have several factors depending upon the depending upon the type of material you select right because now printability is the major major factor for bioprinting right the material should be printable otherwise we cannot use them for bioprinting right so whatever the material we use for bioprinting biofabrication the material has should have printability sufficient suitable printability so that the material should come out through the nozzle in an uniform manner and then it should when you deposit that the deposition process should be uniform so that we get the required resolution the exact geometry that to support the that the design has been made so, so as per the design we can get the exact time. So printability is a major is a major factor for by printing and so the printability of hydrogel is a major is a, the property so the material should have ideal printability so when the and for a material to have printability all these are again important factors that contribute to the printability of a material like viscous viscosity it plays a major role for to decide the printability of a material so based on the viscosity either the material is printable or not that depends on the viscosity like if we use very low viscous material the material can come out of the nozzle very fine then but then the material will start deforming and you will not be able to make a very good structure so printability would be compromised when you use similarly if you use very very high viscous material there is we need to exert a lot of pressure to 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 print the material to extrude the material on the print bed so that is another important so that is another important concern so viscosity so viscosity you need to choose a viscosity that is depending on a particular type of material the viscosity can differ they can be different uh, viscosity have different level of not different race the level of viscosity can be used so viscosity is better then gelatin method as i already as, as the earlier slide we have mentioned that the after extrusion the material has to be solidified so the gelatin method is very important so the gelatin method can actually gelatin process can start before deposition but the material should not be fully cross-linked before gel before extrusion because otherwise it will it will prevent the extrusion of the material so that's why gelatin method is another on what type of gelatin method how fast or the rate of gelatin is also important right and then the rheological properties we have and we have discussed some of the things again we'll discuss more about the rheological properties those are very important for bioprinting right then the biocompatibility of the bio-ink this, this is another important material properties is the way that the material whatever the material we choose to develop the bio ink those materials should be biocompatible in nature and what is biocompatibility biocompatibility means these materials should not set any non desirable undesirable or should not possess any undesirable local or systemic responses that means they should not they should have desirable local or systemic response they should not be toxic to the body so non saturated cytotoxic is very important. This should not be toxic to the body. They, if suppose if they degrade, their degradation product further should not be toxic to the body. And they should allow cell attachment or cell proliferation, cell migration, all these things, the, the, those are very also important. So basically they should support new tissue formation. That means the in case of tissue regeneration, how the tissue new tissue forms, that is the cell, the material should support new tissue formation it should not obstruct or it should not hamper the new tissue formation it should support the new tissue formation that then only we can able to use them for bioprinting because in bioprinting also our ultimate aim is to develop artificial tissue and organ right so if the tissue or if the cell is if the tissue is not growing if the new tissue is not forming then that kind of bioink is now not useful there are more idea there are more properties in this thing like the degradation kinetics and byproducts so the material when you use certain material the degradation rate of that material should match with the ecm production 
by the cells of that particular tissue structure like that should so that means when we use them that thing for uh, tissue engineering because in tissue engineering what will happen the whatever the provisional extracellular matrix that we use in terms of biomaterials that would degrade and then after some time and simultaneously also simultaneously the cells they will produce their own extracellular matrix so these two rates should match the degradation rate of the biomaterials and the ECM production by the cells that means the degradation rate and the tissue building both these things should grow, should go at the should go at the same rate otherwise there will be a mismatch and then that can that that can be that can be a challenging thing other than this the degradation products of this uh, biomaterials they should not be toxic to the cells so all these de different degradation byproducts they should they should not be toxic to the cells any because these biomaterials when they degrade they can produce certain certain byproducts the most imp important thing is the dig the, the biomaterial as such and the dig their degradation product both should not be toxic and then the other thing is these all these biomaterial they have should, should have a suitable swelling or contractile characteristics that means these bioing or these biomaterials they either they can swell or dissolve so that properties should match with the tissues like thing so because they are the swelling behavior is also very important we need to study them that in details then there are certain structure and mechanical properties of the biomaterial that is also important right like when we choose such some biomaterials for some particular tissue particular tissue engineering applications or particular bioprinting then always we match or we try to understand the physical chemical, chemical properties or the mechanical properties of that particular tissue accordingly we choose a material or cho we choose the concentration or of the material accordingly so that that the mechanical properties should the of the construct should be matched so materials should be chosen based on the required mechanical properties of the construct that is very important other than this in terms of chemical the material biomimicry like the materials should be able to match chemically match the chemical properties or the composition of the tissue that means material wise chemical chemistry wise also the material should be should be matching to the tissue ecm or extracellular matrix because the materials are mostly they are they will be used as a provisional extracellular matrix so the materials should mimic the nature chemical nature of that matrix so that the cells when you put the cells on the bioink or the material then the cells can withstand or cells can experience similar chemical milieu or chemical yes or similar micro environment so that they can grow they can function right? the other thing is structure and function and dynamic material properties like the structure of the material is also important because and the mechanical properties of the material that is another those are important to understand because they can have is they can they can influence the tissue building process tissue building process or the bioprinting process also so that materials we have to understand the materials and then other thing is the tissue tissue specific material composition the because each tissue has their own composition right right so we need to understand what is the composition of the particular tissue accordingly for bioing development accordingly we need to employ certain materials so that they can match the that particular tissue compositions right so these are the ideal material properties of bioprinting that we need to consider before actually even going for this typical similar particular type of bioprinting we need to understand all these properties so thank you all of you in the next lecture we will discuss each of these characteristics into in great detail thank you very much so after uh, going through this ideal material properties of for developing biowings for biofabrication let us understand for the important requirements for selecting a biowings for 3d printing
the biometric in terms of the biomaterials like the very first thing that we have discussed for developing any bioink for 3d bioprinting is the the printability of the bioink right the printability of the bioink as we have already discussed the print the material should be able to use for bioprinting like the printability of the material the material should be should flow during the printing process and after going through then after after going through the uh, printed after extrusion after upon deposition the material should be start able to generation the printability of the material is the big base first thing then the biocompatible with the material so the material should be biocompatible biocompatible so that we can be able to use that the next thing we have also discussed the biodegradation of the material that means the material should be degradable at in physiological condition that means when we use that material for a certain applications the material should degrade and the degradation products should not be toxic to the cells to the sonant to the non-cytotoxicity of the material and the degradation product both should not be cytotoxic then the other thing is as the material comes out of the nozzle this should be the gelatin should start or the solidification of the material solidifying of the material is very important so that is another criteria important requirement so the material should be able to get gel by any of this such means either it can be physical chemical or photo so the material should be able to form gel so gelatin is another important criteria then we have discussed because all our tissue if you see most of the all our soft tissues or even some hard tissues are visco they are viscoelastic in nature right so they have both viscous and elastic properties so that's why they so accordingly what are the materials we use for bioprinting like the most all the materials they should have this viscoelasticity okay so this they should have both the viscous and elastic behavior both these things by materials should possess both this behavior and then they should be able to be used for depth uh, by printing of certain tissue structures the other thing is this for survival all this is survival the cells need oxygen nutrients all these things so the whatever the biomaterials we are selecting for bio development that biomaterials should support oxygen oxygen diffusion nutrient permeability permeability so all these things so oxygen and nutrients should able to diffuse through the bio wing so that the cells when they are embedded or encapsulated within the structures so they, then they should be able to get fused so they should be this should able to be able to get the oxygen and nutrient so that they can survive the cells can survive the other thing is the shear thinning behavior of the biomaterials as we have discussed earlier that for extrusion based bioprinting typically the material should have shear thinning properties shear thinning means with increasing in shear rate the viscosity of the material comes down that means it is it's a non newtonian behavior of the material where the viscosity decreases with increases shear rate right and it is helpful for extrusion based bioprinting because in extrusion based bioprinting we extrude when we extrude the material we apply force on the of the, on the material so when we apply force that shear the shear rate increases so due to that the viscosity decreases and the material can easily come out of the extrusion nozzle so shear thinning behavior is another important requirement then the material should stop support tissue regeneration because when you use some uh, biwing and we in incorporate cells or encapsulate cells within this biwing then this biwing provide the necessary microenvironment or support structure to the cells to function like grow mature migrate regenerate so the tissue regeneration process can happen if the cells are healthy they are they are doing their function that is required that's why the uh, biwing whatever the biwing we a uh, material we select to develop bioing that should support tissue regeneration 
Now that is the ultimate goal of our all bioprinting process to develop a tissue, artificial tissue or organ, structure, organ. Then also the remodeling, as we have discussed earlier, that the biomaterial should be degradable. So that means the biodegradable when when after bioprinting of the structure, the biomaterial degrades and it it gives space for the cells to produce extracellular matrix or to deposit extracellular matrix, right? So that degradation of the material and production of ECM by the cells, both these things, both the rate should match. Okay. So that the tissue, we are the material allowing the allowing the cells to remodel the structure or to remodel the tissue. That means a new tissue is growing and the printed structure is getting degraded or printed structure that means the printed biomaterial structure that is getting degraded but the a new tissue is growing in that space so that is remodeling and that is very important for new tissue building so biomaterial should be should be able to provide all these things so these are the important requirements that we discussed like the printability biocompatibility biodegradation gelation viscoelasticity oxygen nutrient permeability shear thinning behavior of the material in tissue regeneration and remodeling so all these are very important required for any bioinks to be used for bioprinting thank you very much for attending this lecture we'll see the rest of the thing like the other bioink properties in great detail each of these bioink properties in great detail in the later classes thank you very much